comes with the folder and then you have to open this up it comes with two folders the rules and the evidence oh. case number case number first let's look at our victim her name is victoria she is our victim local theater owner victoria frankel was murdered on thursday april 4th 2002 at the 12th Street Theater in downtown Edston. In an attempt to cover their tracks and finish the job, the killer set fire to the theater. The original suspects include Malcolm Frankel, the husband, Maggie Cooper, the best friend, Angela Witherson, the actress, Franklin Rooks, the business owner, and Donnie Dillon, the stagehand. All five of these original suspects cooperated fully with investigations and provided statements and fingerprints. However, given the lack of physical ev evidence recovered from the fire, the case went cold and was never solved. Two years later, local business owner Franklin Rooks attempted to purchase the property where the theater was located only to, to determine the property was not in the name of Malcolm or Victoria Frankel. The name on the deed was listed as one Caleb Towers. Police work determined that Caleb was the previously unknown son of Victoria from a previous marriage who was never questioned in the original investigation. After finding this information, detectives Irving and Trapper went to speak to Caleb and found out that he has struggled tremendously over the last two years knowing his mom's murder was unsolved. He was able to provide insight into his mother's case and a piece of potential evidence. This is the cold case website. So I guess now we're gonna hit a play button or something. The local theater, this is the picture. You Myself, along with Detective Trapper, were originally on this case. The case revolves around the murder of one Victoria Frankel on April 4th, 2002. After building the suspect pool, we failed to make any progress as all the leads went cold. But recently we spoke with the son of Victoria Frankel, who provided us with new insight, and we have a renewed spirit to finally get justice. Now, I do appreciate you taking the case, and I look forward to catching this killer who has escaped justice. If you believe your group is ready to take this case, please find all the evidence in the original file I sent over. I really need you on this one. Good luck. We have phase one. Open after you have read the rules and gameplay. When you feel you have the appropriate evidence to complete a phase and further the investigation, you need to confirm online. Follow the directions on each phase card to do so. Phase one. It comes in with the phase one, I guess, instructions. Here's a playbill for the theater and a witness statement. One of the most productive things investigators can do is starting out an investigation is to establish the whereabouts of the suspects at the time of the crime. Given the facts of the case outlined in the medical examiner's report and the police report, one of the suspects is exonerated by the case timeline. Evidence collected in the investigation confirms this. Which two artifacts exonerate one of the suspects by proving they couldn't have been at the scene of the crime? So we need to look at the police report and the medical examiner's report. Now we're going to dive into the evidence folder. We have the police report and the autopsy report. So these are our suspects. So one of these people did it. Either Franklin, the business owner, Malcolm, the husband, Angela, the actress, Donnie, the stage head. I'm just gonna do this. Did you say stage head? I don't know. Did I say stage head? Stage head. Yeah, stage hand. And Maggie, the best friend. I was called to the scene of a fire at 12th Street Theater. There was one individual found dead in the building. The Edston Fire Marshal ruled the cause of the fire arson and non-accidental. Follow up with the medical, medical examiner's office and speak with the spouse of the deceased, Malcolm Frankel. Fire started approximately between 8.45 p.m. and 9 p.m. There was no one other than the deceased found in the building. Preliminary evidence leads towards homicide. We'll wait for medical examiner report to confirm. Witnesses to the incident, Patty Berenster, the, a dog walker, Thomas Smith, a cab driver, and Mendel Woods, a shop owner. Note, play casting cards collected from scene to establish a timeline and to build a person of interest report. And these Would are the, be actors. the actors. Didn't they say to eliminate something? So her name is Angela? Yes. She's there. So she would have, she, we can't eliminate her yet, 
because she's at the theater. The, victim bod the victim's body had indications of blunt force trauma to the head. Duplicates, are they all the same? Okay, so here's the three witnesses that they talked about. What was our witness? Patty. I witnessed walking dog around the time of fire. The fire started very quick. Once I saw the flames, I saw someone come out of the side of the building. I couldn't make out their face, but they ran away. Thomas Smith. I saw the fire. Y'all got here quick. That was some response time. When my shed burned down last spring, it took y'all a good while to get there. Did I see anyone? No, sir. Mendel Woods. Right as the fire started, I saw someone leave the alley. I couldn't make them out completely, but they looked like the person that robbed the theater a few nights ago. So, newspaper clipping. Date, April 6th. Late last month, the Exmoor Museum of Ancient History made the news in not so exciting way. An ancient artifact that was loaned to the 12th Street Theater for their upcoming performance of the... Oh, for that theater. Of the guitarist on ledge was stolen from the theater Tuesday night on the 26th of March. The artifact was described as a crystal sphere about the size of a softball and weighing about three pounds. The glass crystal sphere pictured on the right. Somebody stole this because the witness said it looked like the same person who took the who took the, the, the uh -huh. either. So we need to go to Malcolm's phone records, Donnie's phone records, Angela's phone records. So each he we got a cell tower map. It said 8.45 to 9 is when it happened. Casting playbill. There's two. Victoria's. Oh. There's something different about these. Check that. So this is, this should be different than this. For the playbills, we didn't think there was anything different about them until we read to the bottom. Her producer reception time was 8.30 to 9.30, which was like around the time she got killed. This is hers. And then the other playbills all say 6.30 to 7.30, so a completely different time than what she said. And it might be one of our evidence to the next phase. So here's Donnie, the stagehand. Got some bruises. Got some bruises. But... Looks like a black eye. Donnie Travis Dillon. Prior arrest. Petty theft, convicted, robbery, charges dropped, grand larceny, not convicted, and petty theft. So it's possible that they're trying to link him to that theft of the mm. of the thing in the article, right? Donnie says, I've been staying out of trouble just like I'm supposed to. Donnie said, I have nothing to do with it. Were you at the theater the day of the murder? Yes, but I was just doing my job and I was gone by seven. They've said, Malcolm said that you were supposed to be cleaning up around the time Victoria died. And I'm supposed to believe that a seasoned criminal like you was home eating ice cream in bed. I have no reason to help you and I have nothing else to say. She is a white female. Is this about the theater fire? Detective, yes. What was your relationship like with Victoria Frankel? She and I have been good friends since high school. We kind of fell off when she married that rich husband and decided that she wanted a different life that she didn't include me. She and I have been talking about whether Malcolm was staying faithful. He had been coming home late and sometimes hours after he left work. She had suspected who someone who worked at the theater but was going to talk to him that night. That's what we were talking about on the phone. He is a printer at Frank's Print Shop. I do printing for the theater, but that is about it. Can you tell me where you were that evening? I was at the print shop. He did. He printed these. Oh. I mean, Access maybe he told everybody to, else to go this yeah. time so he can murder. He, he gave her this time so she can be, be there. there. Oh, oh, Gigi, good looking out. Okay, this is her husband and he's a cheater. First, where were you around 845 yesterday evening? I was on my way to a friend's house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does this friend you speak to have a name? Yes, Marie. How long were you at her house? I didn't stay. When I got there, she wasn't home. When is the last time you saw your wife? Yesterday morning. She was supposed to come to the owner's reception at 6.30 at the theater. He did it. But never showed up. Now, we have Angela, the actress, in the play that the theater was doing. Angela Marie. Oh. Marie. He said the name of the, of the person, Ooh, Marie. I knew it was the actress. I told you. <laughs> he said Marie. He didn't say Angela. Okay. So he was Ooh, with her. So far. Okay. But she wasn't home. That's right. We have some questions about Mrs. Frankel's murder. What we are aware about the day of the murder. We had a long day at the theater rehearsing for opening night, but I was gone after the reception. She was invited to the producer's reception, of course, but never showed. Oh, and everyone just left? Yes, we had a big, big day the next day. She was Malcolm's wife. We didn't really have a relationship. So highlight that because why would she just say 
She was Malcolm's wife. She should have just said she's the owner of the theater. Isn't that odd? Let me just say that Malcolm is a good man. I'm not going to drag him through the mud. I am sure he is struggling with all this and just needs support. Nine, eight, seven, seven two, one. two, one. Hey, DSLI, I work for a phone company and I've, I've wanted to watch the center of the cell tower map y'all got. Well, I'm not really sure if you got it, but, but I sent over the cell phone records that you asked for and I'm not sure if I was supposed to look or not. It's just not right. Well, well, anyways, you know, given the time and everything. Yeah. So we have two people that we could rule out based on their yeah. phone. Can we use her police statement and her phone records? So do Maggie do, first. Was my map of Edison is K1, Maggie's uh, D5. <gasps> we got it? Yeah. 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 Maggie's not... A so we were anymore. doing it right, but you I was just stupid. using that. <laughs> Technically, we were right. I You're was just so not stupid. using the cell phone tower codes. Maggie did it, do it. Maggie for the win. Good job. Uh, what do we do now? Oh, phase two. Okay. More fingerprints. So, phase two. The police use Maggie's phone to re records to prove she could not have committed the murder. The investigation turns into identifying the unknown person leaving the scene of the crime. An eyewitness statement from the last from that night led police to confirm that the unidentified person is responsible for crimes in the neighborhood. This led police to collect partial prints from these local crimes and three criminal profiles that may be matched. Police are confident that one of these fingerprints entered into the into the evidence. Donnie. It has to be Donnie. Belongs to the criminal scene leaving the theater the night of the fire. Unless he stole it and he didn't kill her. It says which two artifacts reveal the identity of the unidentified person seen fleeing the scene. It's Donnie. He didn't kill her. And it comes with more fingerprints. Yeah. Oh, of the the three the suspects. Robberies. These are the fingerprints we have to match. All right. You said it don't match any of them. I from my, at first glance. Right. This is Donnie's exact fingerprint to his ring. You see how there's the three lines when you move it away? Three lines. He committed the robbery, but I don't think he killed her. It's what? P six. Mm -hmm. C three. <gasps> that was fast. Wow, we're getting better. It says open up your next envelope. So it was right. It was Donnie. We unlocked the next phase. So Over here. Phase and three. Phase three. Matching the partial print identifies Donnie Dillon as the one leaving the scene the night of the murder. Police went to question him only to find out he had just been murdered. <gasps> Rest in peace. Johnny! Police believe his and Victoria's murder are connected. The killer must have felt the investigation closing in. Police have reason to believe that the opportunity for Victoria's murder was created by getting her to the theater at a specific time. Franklin. Franklin. Donnie committed the theft, but Franklin killed the her. The husband put it up to it. But the husband told him, hey, kill my wife. Remember, because she's about to know about my Donnie memory. Marie. Don yep. Donnie's phone records show that he, he called Malcolm. Sorry, Donnie, you didn't make it. Sorry, Don. Which two artifacts identify the person responsible for Victoria being at the theater alone that night? Can we read this? What is this? There's two more witness statements. About the time of the incident, I saw a darkish colored SUV sped away. Does he we drive an SUV? Yeah, remember the husband, he had two cars. Black Explorer, Ford. Lincoln Navigator. It's an SUV. That SUV. But that's white and red. She said dark. And it was dark, so it could have been the gray one. This one says, I wasn't here when it happened. I found him on the ground when I got home. I did notice something was missing. It was the round thing he had on his desk. That the globe. That he stole. I think he got it a couple of years ago. Playbill? It says order number 256987. Oh, this is probably the order for the different playbill. Let's see this barcode. Just see what it says. Maybe the receipt. Open link. There it is, with the order number. number for the different time, the 8.30. Yeah. The 8.30. Is it Malcolm? By Donnie. Oh, no, that's order pickup. 
That's all it says. Official interview transcript. We could try it. We're stuck on phase three. Oh, Why do we keep I, doing I, I, this? I didn't read it, but it's a six digit code right there. It says six digit code. We were putting two. And we, you can't even see it. But we were putting two digits. No, we're putting four. And it's six. So two artifacts and who, it's a and two part question. What's two, yeah, and it says six digits on the back, so you did it too. <laughs> We can't even get the instructions right. We can Solve never be a case solver. We can't solver. read the instructions right. We can't right. even read the instructions <laughs> written in bold. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> oh my god, we did so many We're calls. <laughs> G7J1. Who person. do we think it is? Frank? That's I think the invoice. It. What about our... Remember when it says scan the QR code oh and my put in the order? This has a different order. There it is. It's here. a whole separate here, here. order. Here, track another order. Three, two. Three, two. Angela! Angela! Oh! oh! She killed Donnie. Okay. We were doing the wrong person. G7. The last phrase. That one hurt my head. I know, that one got me mad. The printing invoice for Victoria's playbill proves that Angela is responsible for getting her to the theater. When police went to bring her in, they arrested her for both Victoria and Donnie's murders based on what they saw at her house. Police took five photos at residence and, some, and something in one of the photos con connects her to Donnie's murder. Connecting her to this murder would wrap the up globe. the investigation and finally get justice for the victims and the families involved. Which two artifacts put Angela at the scene of Donnie's murder? I bet you the globe is one. Look for the pictures. That's it. There it is. Yep. That's I'm it. I'm look at the pictures real quick. The roommate right here. He says uh, it was the round thing he had on his desk. So what number is that? So Evan Ellis. Evan's witness statement is P6. So R9 and P6. Other roommate. Nope. What the? All right, guys, last hit for the last phase. Yes, um, I'm Donnie's roommate, and I wanted to give you guys a call. I was boxing up his stuff, and like I said, his crystal ball thingy is definitely not here. I was looking at the news. It reminds me of that artifact stolen like a year or so ago. The article. Back. Did Donnie we steal that? I thought we tried that. I guess it's true what they say. You that's like three different things though, I think. Okay, so it was the last clues was the picture with the globe that he had stole from the theater. And then the news article saying that it has been stolen. Kind of confusing, wouldn't really suspect that one, but we're done. It says, congratulations. Your detective team has completed the investigation. You solved the 12th Street case and brought Angela to justice. To hear the result of your team's work, listen to the audio below of the final interrogation of Angela. Okay, long story short, she killed Victoria so she can stay with Victoria's man because they were going behind the back. That's it, guys.